Hello and welcome back to our lecture for Chapter 6, Fraud and White Collar Crime. We are going to explain the development of the fraud theory, starting with the fraud triangle. So fraud theory is founded in the seminal research of Donald Cressley, who was a student of Edwin Sullivan, who in 1949 interviewed 209 inmates at three prisons in the Midwest for the purpose of studying embezzlement behavior. Cressy presented his research findings in the 1953 book, Other People's Money, in which he theorized that fraud results from the convergence of three factors, pressure, opportunity, and rationalization. He described pressure, which was identified in every inmate interview, as a need or non-shareable problem that precedes the criminal violation of financial trust. Many different situations con contribute to that motive of that violation of trust. Cressley theorized that, theorized that a non-shareable problem is a stimulus to a violation only when the person's position of trust is perceived as offering a solution. So motivation alone does not induce a crime. Even the most motivated offenders must have opportunity. So opportunity is often attributable to the fact that individuals trained in the routine duties of a position of trust have essentially been trained in the skills necessary to violate that trust. So those individuals who play a role in control functions are also in a position to manipulate or circumvent those controls. Rationalization. Cressy theorized that rationalization enables the violator to adjust or reconcile two sets of conflicting values and behavior patterns. Rationalization is a process by which a person attempts to make his or her actual or intended behavior more logical or justified. That justification allows the individuals to perceive violations of trust as a legitimate means for solving their non-shareable problems. Violators generally engage in rationalization before or at the same time that that act takes place. Now let's discuss the fraud triangle. So Cressley's research um, suggests that violations of trust or fraud occur when the position of trust, that opportunity, is viewed by the trusted person as a rational means or solution to solve their non-shareable problem, which is pressure. So the research is the foundation for what is known as the fraud triangle, which proposes that three factors, pressure or need, opportunity and rationalization, constitute the conditions under which fraud occurs. So the implication is that influencing any one of these conditions can impact the likelihood that fraud would occur. Forensic accountants must be familiar with the indicators or red flags or conditions that are commonly present when fraud occurs. Research consistently identifies certain red flags that are related to the incidence of fraud. Here you see the top five indicators are of fraud that are listed, and they're separated into two categories, personal characteristics and organizational characteristics. So for example, in personal characteristics, the fraudster is living beyond their means. They might be abusing drugs or alcohol. They might be feeling underpaid. They might have a gambling habit or they might be under some type of family or peer pressure. Whereas organizational characteristics, the fraudsters, maybe the organization has placed that fraud too much trust in that key employee. There's no segregation of duties. There's um, lack of complete and timely reconciliations or independence checks, lack of clear lines of authority and responsibility. And that concludes our lecture for this learning objective.